Good morning and Merry Almost Christmas to you. I'm Pastor Everett Stoddard from Prairie Chapel United Methodist Church, thanking you for tuning in this morning to this program called A Closer Walk. And we invite you to take a closer walk with Jesus, the newborn Jesus, this day and every day. Prairie Chapel would love to welcome you for worship today at 9.15. Today's our children's Christmas pageant, so I know you'll want to be there to celebrate Jesus' birthday. And then we'd also love to welcome you this Friday evening, 7 p.m., for a worship service of carols, candlelight, and communion. Let's gather together to celebrate the newborn king. A baby, such a tiny little baby. We see God's love overflow. A promise, such a beautiful promise. New hope for a family to grow, and this hope will unveil a new meaning, a new feeling in all that we do. For this child has come, bringing joy and love and a new gift, a new life breaking through. Friends, Jesus Christ is the child of promise, the child of hope. How our hearts have been touched by his love. Now our hearts are made new through the hope found in you, Jesus, child of promise child of hope. A father, such a kind and loving father, we see God's grace overflowing in giving us his son. A savior, such a beautiful savior, new hope for his children to know as he was from the very beginning. He is now and forever and will be our eternal hope, our eternal joy, Lord of love, Lord of life. Prince of Peace. God's plan of redemption was advanced when one simple peasant girl said yes. A yes that would change the world. There was no complicated ritual, no advanced theological training involved, just the trusting words I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. May it be the same in your life, in my life. Help us to cooperate with God's plan for the world by saying yes to the Lord of Lords, our King of Kings, that Savior born in Bethlehem. Even now, may we say yes to our Holy Father and be led by His Holy Spirit. Come on us so that the life of Christ may be shown through us to the needy world around us. We praise you, O God, that you sent your Son, Jesus, to save us. You don't deliver us into the hands of the enemy when we sin. Rather, You make a way to restore us into relationship with yourself. You don't abandon us, even though we stray from you. Instead, you rescue us, you redeem us, you forgive us, and guide our feet into the path of peace. We can't comprehend that the creator of the universe would take on flesh and be born of a peasant girl. God, the one who spoke the galaxies into existence, became a speechless newborn baby. The one who gave the stars their light, veiled his own glory, and slipped unnoticed into the human race. God, the one who clothed all of nature in its boundless beauty and order, came to us wrapped in rags and lying in a feeding trough. The miracle of the incarnation of Jesus is all too unexpected, too mysterious, too holy for us to understand. We can only follow the shepherds to the manger and bow in astonishment and thanksgiving, glorifying and praising God for all that we have seen and heard. Henri Nguyen writes, God became a little baby. Who can be afraid of a little baby? A tiny little baby is completely dependent on its parents, 
its nurses, its caregivers. Yes, God wanted to become so powerless as to be unable to eat or drink, walk or talk, play or work without many people's help. Yes, God became dependent on human beings to grow up and live among us and proclaim the good news. Yes, God chose to become so powerless that the realization of God's own mission among us became completely dependent on us. How can we fear a baby we rock in our arms? How can we be envious of a tender baby? That's the mystery of the Incarnation. God became human, in no way different from other human beings, to break through the walls of power in total weakness. That's the story of Jesus. Have you ever noticed that children have so many of the same mannerisms as their parents? They walk, they gesture, and even laugh like their parents sometimes. Children also mimic the bad traits of their parents, too. But it is a great compliment to parents that their sons and daughters are like them. Why did the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, become one of us? Certainly not for his own benefit. The Gospel of John records it this way. But to as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God. C.S. Lewis says it like this. The Son of God became a man to enable men to become the sons of God. God didn't become a man to impress anyone, least of all us. God was in the business of raising up us men and women to become like him, people who walk in his ways, who act like he acted, and do what he did. Jesus became like us so that we might become like him. Parents want their children to grow up to be like them, maybe better. Setting aside our faults for the moment, it is better for them to become like us than to stay as children. That is also our Heavenly Father's intent for us. At times it is painful when God molds and shapes us to be conformed to the image of His Son. But we become more ourselves when we become like Him. Yet to all who received Him, to those who believed on his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of its creator. Yes, the best giving happened on the first Christmas, when God gave us his son. He gave out of love to a world in need of love, but deserving none of it. When John writes that God is love, He's saying that God is a giver who thinks outside of himself, selflessly taking care of the needs of others. And Mark wrote, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Give me a heart, O Lord, that gives as you gave. I'm Pastor Everett Stoddard, from the chapel on the prairie, in Coshocton. Merry Christmas.